All right, good morning, everyone. This is Dr. Bill with World Bible School, and for those that are watching right now, uh, welcome to Friday Morning Conversations. Uh, we're back uh, again with uh, Apostle Daniel Williams as we're finishing up this series, uh, Never Give Up. Uh, how you doing this morning, sir? Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I'm not giving up, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey man, I hear that. Um, so anyway, it's good to see everybody. Good to see Dr. Faye joining us this morning. Um, good to see others uh, as the numbers are already climbing. We appreciate you all so very much. Um, good to see uh, Tarzi Martin and uh, Linda Routley, and, uh, who is one of our students, and um, uh, we just love you all. Good to see Dr. K. Fairchild um, watching this morning. So uh, in this series, we've been talking about, uh, about the possibilities of never giving up no matter what. Um, in, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 6, the Apostle Paul encourages the people that God provides strength within to lead us beyond the basic teachings of humanity. Now, those that are familiar with uh, Hebrews, chapter 6, uh, we, we know about uh, these truths from the early in the beginning. Good to see uh, Pastor Samuel uh, watching this morning. Um, uh, and so... So the thing is that, you know, we are convinced that it is possible for each of us to rekindle the fire of faith. I think that's what Paul was talking about, to rekindle the fire of faith within us so that we can avoid feelings of giving up in life. And Apostle Daniel, a lot of people today feel like, I'm not saying everybody gives up, but there's a lot of people that feel like giving up because of various pressures and circumstances and things going on. And um, I think I think what Paul's talking about here is, is the importance of imitating uh, of, uh, the life of Christ uh, as one who believes what God has said. And uh, so, uh, before we get into the scriptures this morning, kind of bring us into this, talk to us, uh, just just uh, uh, share with the people this morning uh, what we're talking about. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's for me, uh, it's very important because it's been a long road. And I think with anybody, I know Bishop uh, would say that a lot of the things that he's seeing now didn't happen immediately. It took them a while to get there. Mm -hmm. And it, it's like a journey. And uh, every journey, they say, it starts with one step. But if you take one step, you don't uh, stop stepping. You keep going uh, so that you can find your, the destination you're heading toward. But in life, hey, things happen. Uh, the rain falls on the just, the unjust. Uh, uh, we go through circumstantial things, but they all come to an end at some point. And mm -hmm. it, it is definitely a faith walk. And that we chose uh, for this this meeting, uh, the story about Abraham, because uh, if anyone could have given up, he certainly could have, because the journey took him a long time to see the promise through Isaac. And that really was the beginning of the promise through Isaac. A 25 year process and uh, you know when when you're steadfast and you're moving towards what you know the lord is has for your life you don't quit till you get there and that's uh, that's where we're at today we're going to talk about it and you're going to be encouraged and uh, we're going to go forward that's all i know amen 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 for sure uh and, and so as we uh, as we look at this today the fact is that uh, we at some point in our lives have have uh, maybe given up on dreams and and uh, visions and hopes ever coming to pass and and you know the thing is is that we need to learn to exercise patience. Uh, yes. I, I think patience. Uh, uh, I think a lack of patience is the hindrance or one hindrance to manifestations. And so when we learn to just uh, relax, just uh, be at peace, be at rest, it seems like when you don't worry about the manifestation, when it's going to come, how it's going to come, uh, they just seem to come. You know, the Bible said in, in uh, uh, Matthew 6, uh, verse uh, 34, 
34, I believe it is, 33 or 34, he says, uh, he says, seek first the kingdom of God, 33, and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. The, the, the <laughs> phrase added to you uh, actually in the Greek can be rendered that will automatically be added to you. Uh, this is the counterpart to Deuteronomy 28 verse 1 that says all these blessings will come on you and overtake you. And so for blessings to come on you and overtake you uh, is something that you do not have to strive for. Now, of course, the Old Testament, they're talking about performance and works. But in the New Testament, Jesus is talking about just depending on him, not worrying about things. Um, so, uh, you know, and the question came up in my mind uh, in the last few days uh, is, is worry a sin? Well, when when you define sin as mistaken identity, people worry because they don't understand their identity. They don't understand who they are and who Father is. Now, the fact is that God has promised his blessings to everyone. We see this a lot in Scripture. And uh, that being the case, uh, it is especially... Uh, to those who follow their God-given hope. Uh, what I mean, uh, the blessings are for everybody, but it seems like they they manifest to those who follow their God-given hope. Now, I want to read our, our, our uh, beginning passage today from uh, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 11 and 12. This is the New King James Version, and we'll go on to verse 13, I think it is here shortly. But it says, and, and we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end uh, that you do not become sluggish or the word sluggish here actually can be translated lazy and imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. So we can miss the mark of, of 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 uh, of seeing manifestations in our lives, uh, uh, if we're if we you know here's here's one of the things, and I'm trying to get this out. Uh, we have really become a, a society, uh, a negative society about following the faith of others. But you know, here's the thing for me. Uh, I, you know, I, I want to follow. Paul said, "Follow me as I follow Christ," and I, and I think that's good counsel. But I think there are times when we see uh, things working, especially the, just the understanding of truth and following that. When we see that working in other people's lives, I think it's okay to follow that. Follow their faith. Uh, you may look at scripture and we may all see something a little bit different or render it a different way. But in essence, um, uh, we need to be mindful of the diligence people show, for example, just to stay in the word. Okay, uh, and, and he says, don't become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. So as we see these things working in people's lives, uh, it's certainly a case where we want to follow uh, the, the, the essence of what they're doing. Tell us about that. Yeah, I'm gonna, I, I was listening to what you were saying, it's, uh, and I thought of this. It's a good idea for you to surround yourself with people that are successful uh, ones that are professing a relationship with the lord preferably because you know that they're they're plugged in and they're they're uh, developing the mind of christ and uh, they're finding out who they are and they're uh, they're becoming successful because they're finding out these this truth and if you connect with people walking in the truth, you will find yourself going towards that yourself, and you will you will experience greater freedom. Yeah, uh, that yeah, you don't want to surround yourself with. I, and there's people like this, Bishop, but we know them, and I, I'm not judging or, or putting anybody down. But their uh, their revelation of truth is nothing but failure. Uh, they've seen this happen in my family tree, uh, Bishop. My daddy was a failure. His daddy was a failure. And they were all a bunch of failures. So the only thing I got to look forward to is being a failure. And they, they take the wrong role models. And then they, they, they just assume that's their life they're supposed to live. So that's why we need to, to focus on those who through faith and patience inherit the promise because they, they have a, a, a track re record that's become consistent and they have a fruitful life. Now I'm going to quote a, um, 
Yeah, this is from my past. I don't remember what dictionary uh, that uh, that I read it in, but patience is the ability not to become annoyed when delays come. You'll you'll notice that if you get annoyed about something long enough, it, it'll just take over your thinking, and then you you become a grumbler, a complainer. And you're more focused on that than you are the possibilities of actually being successful. So patience, uh, when we're operating in patience, we, we, we are literally, uh, and I believe this according to the scripture, uh, Luke 21, 19, in your patience, possess ye your souls. Mm-hmm. When you're in this, uh, in patience and you you not getting uh, too annoyed when you have to wait a little while longer, you begin to take possession of your emotions. And instead of being just run around with emotions and you know how people are up and down one day smiling, next day they're looking at their shoes and saying, "Ah, like Job, would to God I'd never been born, Lord. I mean, I'm going to tear my clothes and I'm going to shave my head. I'm in such a bad place. And the <laughs> thing of it is, one, the next day you see them and they're smiling. Uh, and patience is the ability to become consistent and stay steadfast. And, and then look at the examples, biblical examples. Yes, absolutely look at them. But uh, you can also look at other examples of people that, and, and you say that, that they have a, a solid life uh, they're not looking at things negatively all the time. They, they believe they can be successful. God put that in them. And they're successful people. The Lord's wanting the body of Christ, and I say it that way because that's who we are. He's wanting us to be successful in our lives and not let little delays stop you from the, the dream or the vision, or what you know inside that that the Lord wants to accomplish through you, don't be cut off from that because you're not you 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 don't have the patience to keep going. Amen. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and and you know, here's the thing: uh, when you see others succeed who have had the patience to keep going, don't become jealous. Okay, no. when, you know, you know, I had a, I had a, a, a presbyter. Uh, we called him back when I was a, t- a, a young minister. Uh, I was probably 19, 20 years old, maybe, maybe 19. And he put his hand on my shoulder and he said, "Son," he said, "if you're going to follow any pattern your life after anybody, pattern it after Jesus." Now, I get that whole concept, but uh, and I do agree with that. But there are times where uh, following after Jesus can be as easy as seeing someone else who is following Christ and doing what they do. Uh, it, it's not that, you know, back in the day we saw books written, uh, 10 Steps to Victory, uh, 8 Steps to Prosperity. Uh, don't, 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 don't get caught up in following <laughs> no. all of that. It, it won't do you any good. Uh, and I, and I, I, don't, I don't say that it won't work it, sometimes for some people, uh, but nine times out of ten, it really just doesn't work for everybody. It was something that that person experienced, and it worked for them, and they wrote a book about it, and it was a blessing to people. But remember, find your own path. Find your own pattern. Here in uh, uh, e- e- uh, Hebrews 6, verse 11 and 12, and I want to read this from the Passion Translation real quick. Um a lot of, uh, from a theological standpoint, a lot of people still debate whether who the author of of Hebrews was. Uh, some believe it was a, a collective work. Uh, I, for me, I think it has the Apostle Paul written all over it, and maybe he had contributors that helped him. But uh, nonetheless, that's just my view. And it says this. But we long to see you passionately advance until the end, and you find your hope fulfilled. You don't allow your heart, so don't allow your hearts to grow dull, uh, your heart or your mind. Uh, Don't become dull of heart or of mind or lose your enthusiasm, but follow the example of those who fully received what God has promised because of their strong faith and patient endurance. 
And so as we look at this, when we talk about dull of heart, what does it mean to become dull of heart? Well, we're talking about that today, uh, not get, never give up. But this, this, come, word, uh, this phrase comes from the Greek word nothros. And it actually uh, uh, is taken from the root word meaning illegitimate child or son. So the implication here is that we do not see ourselves as a child of illegitimacy or as a child of, of, of uh, but as a child of intimacy. Not a child of illegitimacy, but a child of intimacy. Uh, and, that, uh, uh, and that should keep our relationship with Father uh, very fervent and, and, and filled with passion. Uh, because verse 12 speaks of their strong faith and patient endurance and the Aramaic says that it can read because of their faith and the outpouring of the Spirit. This is intended to be Holy Spirit. So the fact is that Holy Spirit guides us like a mother. Uh, I've always looked at the Holy Spirit uh, back all the way to Genesis 1 verse uh, two, that she brooded over the face of the waters, uh, which has to do with the face of our emotions, uh, the, 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 the minds of mankind. And, and she endure, ever, endeavors to see her children succeed in all things. Uh, Apostle, I wish this morning people could actually catch hold of this, that, that God uh, already planned our success. Uh, he never planned anything about our lives to be failure. He, he never planned for us to give up and quit. He always planned for us to succeed. Talk to us some more, please. Yeah, Isaiah 46.10. That's become a go-to for me. And I translate it a little bit, but uh, he it says that he has established the end from the beginning or mm -hmm. the, out, the outcome. And uh, is the way I see that. So uh, it, it, you see, if you think about God the Father, the creator, and then if you look back at the men was created before they were manifested in the earth in physical mm -hmm. form, we were already created in him. Uh, he, he's, he had a purpose for us from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And when men was created, he looked at all that he made and he said, it's very good. Yes, he so did. So the, pro the problem is that, that in, our, in our walk with the Lord and our, our developing and beginning to, to have the mind of Christ and to think as he is, so are we in this world. We, we have all these other stereotypes and all these other things that we've, went, we've listened to and we've watched, we've heard that develop some wrong thinking and uh, so our whole thinking system our whole mind has to be renovated renewed restored to what the lord has originated for us so that we can feel qualified enough to be the people that are are, are blessed as we follow the examples he's given to us and we, we, we see the multiplication of his blessing in our life like it did in them. Mm -hmm. But you can't see yourself that way unless you, unless you realize that you are accepted. <laughs> I like Ephesians, it's in, in um, chapter one, is where it's found. It says that we are accepted in the beloved. Yes, sir. He, he, we're not rejected. You know, Jesus come to manifest the Father's fullness and his will and his purpose for mankind to, to know him and to have a relationship with him as, as it was to begin with, to be able to walk with him and, and, and to be able to trust him. Uh, the problem is with, we have developed a mindset of not trusting and, and the God that we cannot see with our natural eyes because uh, of things that we've gone through and the way we view it from a natural uh, uh, standpoint. But the Lord wants us to develop in, in seeing him. I'm hearing reverb. <laughs> it's right. talking back to me. But he wants us to develop in knowing him personally and even through these examples to help us know him. Uh, so that we not, we're not going through life uh, feeling like, uh, you know, uh, it isn't going to get better for me. 
You know, yeah. it is going to get better for the church. It is going to get better for the for those that are putting their faith in him. It's going to get better. And I wish everybody was there and with that. But they're not all with that right now. But they need to see the example of us that are pressing in and pursuing these these realities so they can see the way it's really supposed to be. Jesus said, we are, we are seen. We like a city. We are set on a hill, and we are seen of men. And, and, and what, what our lives develop, the works that come forth from us, the fruit that is developed, he, he said that they would see that, and they would glorify God. You mm -hmm. know, so uh, uh, we developing in that, I, I'm, I'm not going to quit, and I encourage everybody, if you ever feel like quitting, you might be just, uh, you might be one day from seeing something happen that you've been waiting uh, 20 or 30 years from uh, yes, to sir. take place. It might be one day. Go ahead, Bishop. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely right. Um, so, you know, that's the thing. I, I think that at, uh, people at large uh, have trust issues. Um, mm -hmm. we, we don't trust each other. Uh, we don't trust our fellow man. We go to the, the grocery store. We check the receipt over thoroughly because we don't trust that they didn't make a mistake. Not saying there's no wisdom in that. I'm not saying that at all. But I'm just saying that at large, there is a lot of trust issues within mankind. Now, what happens is, is as we have established these trust uh, issues, uh, this reluctancy to trust, we then, uh, that is then transferred toward our relationship with God and we say God I trust you but at the same time deep within we really don't have uh, trust him now uh, let me just say this uh, I learned a long time ago that that uh, yes I don't trust everyone uh, but the only way that I can trust someone who has done me wrong is because I trust father and I trust father with that person and so we need to learn that trust really uh, is established in our relationship with father uh, so it's not from our human trust issues and then that's transferred to God it's that we learn to trust our father so that that can be transferred to our relationships with people now moving on in these scriptures I know we've been talking about Abraham and his faith in God and this has been a very powerful series uh, Hebrews 6 verse 13 to 15 this is the New King James says for when God made a promise to Abraham because he could swear by no greater he swore by himself I mean think about that God made a promise and <laughs> what backed up that promise was himself saying surely blessing I will bless you and multiplying I will multiply you and so after he had patiently endured this is talking about Abraham after Abraham had patiently endured he obtained the promise now when God made a promise that Abraham and Sarah was going to have a child uh, a son particularly uh, it didn't happen overnight As a matter of fact it was a few years uh, and and Abraham was now 100 and Sarah was now 90 uh, and, and I don't don't remember if it was 90 or 99 that she actually gave birth to Isaac but the point I'm getting at is she was way past the age of giving birth uh, this these same verses in the passion translation say now when God made a promise to Abraham since there was no one greater than himself he swore an oath on his own integrity to keep the promise as sure as God exists so he said have no doubt I promise to bless you over and over and give you a son and multiply you without measure. So Abraham waited patiently in faith and succeeded in seeing the promise fulfilled. Uh, Apostle, I want to hear some more about this story. Talk to us. Amen. Yeah, the the she was 90, actually. Yeah. I, 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 I wrote that. I, I researched that a long time ago and went back into it, and I got their ages uh, for different things that happened, the, mm -hmm. you know, the account of that. But in Hebrews uh, chapter 11, it talks about that she was beyond the ability to bear a child. I won't yes. go there probably for the sake of time, but she, w but she believed in, in him. And, and she believed in the God that was able to do that just like her husband did. I, I think it's a that's a very, very big thing, an issue, is believing. 
because the, the problem with if our believing is wrong, then the outcome is not the one the Lord wants us to have. He wants us to believe and completely trust him with our whole life. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we're here for a reason. We're not here just to suffer and barely get by. Uh, we live on barely get by street right next to Grumble Alley. We, we're in a mess all, every day of our life. And we're quoting scriptures out of context. You know, man's days are few and full of trouble. You know, we're taking scripture out of context and making things worse. And the, the, he don't want you to take the word out of context, apply it to your life and, and, and live in that identity of things could get worse. Let's change our identity to things could get better. You know, God is in you. You are in him. You are one with him. Uh, and if you are one with him, then what is he like? And what kind of, uh, if you were to just imagine, uh, you know, Father, are you having, uh, is, are you having difficulties, Father? Um, are you having a hard day today? He's not. He ain't having a hard day. He never has a hard day. He's not having a difficult time. He's not wondering or worrying about anything he ever said that would come to pass because he's got the ability to bring it to pass. And the fact is, because we are in union with him as one with him, the same blessing that our father God is in all the time is the same blessing we ought to have. We shouldn't have any kind of a different blessing operating in our lives as part of who he is and, and, and one with him. The same blessing that he is, uh, is the same one we are. And I, I cannot see, uh, for the life of me, Bishop, I cannot see Father God. Not, we're just going to make a kind of a funny thing out of this. Father God, he's sitting on a wooden bench, you know, and he's talking to the angels and saying, I don't know what I'm going to do today, uh, Michael <laughs> Gabriel. Somebody please help me. I, I don't have the answers. I really, you know, I, I'm, I'm confused today. You know, we haven't got a mind full of confusion. We got the mind of Christ. Could you imagine him ever acting like that? Now, if right. you can't imagine God being like that, then why would you imagine yourself to be anything different when as he is, so are you in this world? If you're one with him and you are as he is and you got this kind of relationship, then you ought to be looking at it from the vantage point and the view of, hey, Lord, I, you know, yeah, I know you're I know you're doing well. I, I know you're not displeased with me. I know you're consistent. I know you're not worried about these things that you have planned for my future coming to pass because you have the capability of bring, manifesting those things when they're supposed to be. I, I do yeah. believe there's certain times, Bishop, and probably may not be for everything, but there are certain times when certain things need to happen and they will happen and they won't happen until then because the father has the overview of all of us. He knows what you need, what I need, what needs to happen in the earth to produce his, his full purpose, his vision, his plan for mankind. So he knows about that. So he's working with all of us and bringing us into alignment with him and with each other so these things can manifest. And yes. that's why we can't give up. He says in, in Hebrews chapter 10, and uh, Amplified, I'll mix a little of that um, classic. He says, cast not away, therefore, your fearless confidence, for it has great recompense of reward that after you've done the will of God, you might receive the promise. I like that. Don't cast away your, your confidence because when you know him, and we're developing in that, there's no reason to doubt the plan the Lord has for us. There is no reason to doubt it. Amen? Yeah, absolutely. 
Um, and, and, you know, when it comes to what God has promised, and you, you, you kind of tied some things together here, uh, connecting the dots, as I say, uh, mm-hmm. that as he is, so are we in this world. And, 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 and talking about uh, the promises of God now, uh, we have uh, somebody in the chat room that says, pray for my nephews in critical condition. Well, I want to give this testimony again uh, of, of COVID-19. Now, a lot of people have had COVID. Uh, I know some prominent ministers who are some of the greatest ministers I know of who have had COVID. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and it's not a matter of that, uh, that your body um, um, uh, intakes uh, or, or uh, gets COVID. It's a matter of how you treat it while it's there. Now, here's what I mean by that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The entire time uh, I had COVID, uh, for two weeks, I, I literally said, uh, as he is whole, as my father is whole, uh, uh, so I am whole. Now, I get that from just exactly what you quoted from uh, 1 John 5, that uh, as he is, so are we in this world. In, in other words, who I, who God is. Now, it's not just who God is. It's who I discover that God is. Okay, and that discovery is called revelation. And when I get get revelation of who my father is, first of all, I don't see Jesus as the Jesus of 33 and a half years. I see him as the eternal Christ. That's how John portrays him. The one who uh, was uh, the uh, called himself the disciple whom Jesus loved. Uh, 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 loved. Uh, John was constantly laying his head on the chest of Jesus, uh, implying that he was always listening to the heartbeat of the father. And, and so we go all the way back to the beginning. You know, the scriptures say, that that death reigned from Adam to Moses, even though everybody after Adam didn't do what Adam did. But it doesn't say that death reigned before Adam. Okay, this is this is clear in your Bibles, ladies and gentlemen. This is in your Bible in in the New Testament. Death reigned from Adam to Moses, not prior to Adam. So death was not a part of God's creation plan. Mankind introduced uh, at death. Uh, Adam introduced the death concept, and there's a whole story there that I don't want to get into now. But the thing is, is that uh, when we talk about this story of Abraham and Isaac, uh, it's a pot, a picture of Father God and his relationship. Relationship. Now listen, not with Jesus per se, because Jesus is a part of Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the triune Godhead. But this is a picture of, of, of Father God and his relationship with you. Okay? And, and, and it's like Father desires all mankind. Listen, stop being hard. If you're a preacher and you're watching this today, even if this is later on on YouTube, on World Bible School Media on YouTube, uh, I want you to hear this. Quit beating people up because of where they are right now. Uh, God desires, see, I consider Father's desire greater than mankind's desire. <laughs> Father God desires all mankind to enter into relationship and fellowship with him by way of, listen to this, communication. Love is simply communication between two people. Uh, Our prayer is simply communication between two people in love. Do you know that the worst of sinners on their worst day, if I could say it that way, I know sinners sin means uh, uh, sin means a uh, hamartia uh, mistaken identity, but but a, a, a person who's classified a sinner or what we might call an unbeliever on their worst day will call out to God. They will communicate with God. I'm not talking about deathbed experiences. Uh, I'm talking about just in life in general. And so uh, that's what God wants. Uh, the promise of of giving giving Abraham and Sarah a son uh, that God promised, and then he said to multiply his seed is also a type of the many sons and daughters that Father created. Now, uh, I, I want to get this back to Apostle Daniel, but but think about this from verse 15. He so, said, so Abraham waited patiently in faith and succeeded in seeing the promise fulfilled. And it seems that the name Abraham is not in the Greek text. It was out, out of the, at the Arab or the Hebrew, uh, but but the Greek text of this verse uh, might read this way, that he, God, bestowed his spirit, and he, Abraham, received the kingdom. Think about that. God bestowed his spirit, so the spirit of God, Holy Spirit, guides us, what does the scripture say? Into all truth. He guides us into all truth. See, whoever you are right now, I want you to understand uh, that God is, 
is working in all mankind. Why is he doing that? And he's doing that by his spirit. Why? So that we will open up our hearts and embrace the kingdom that is already within us. Come on, Apostle, talk to us. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty good, Bishop. You got to doing a little preaching there. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> now, we need to get excited. I mean, there's there needs to be enthusiasm. I mean, if anybody needs to be enthusiastic, it's us that are searching and seeking our identification with the Father God and developing in that so everybody can recognize who he is. I mean, wh why wouldn't you be enthusiastic about, uh, about being who God said you are? Mm -hmm. The problem is we got we got to we got to have our mindset change. Mm -hmm. We got to get past past these these things, these bad experiences we had, and connect with the experiences the Lord is unveiling and revealing to us. And don't live your life in your failures. Live your life in 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 this future time that you're at right now in the victories and in the in the possibilities because he said all things are possible mm -hmm. to him that believeth and he said he will withhold no good thing from us and uh, that god our father is not holding us back he ain't holding it he isn't withholding anything from us because he's given to us all things that pertain to life i i i, mm -hmm. I could just stop there because he didn't give us all things that pertain to death Come on. Wow. He didn't give us that. Come on. Well, brother, I'll tell you what. Yeah, we're getting old, Bishop. We got to get in bad shape somehow. How are you going to die if you're not sick? We just, <laughs> we got to have these problems. It's just the way it is. It isn't the way it is. It's what we thought it was. You see, the, the, there's a truth in the Bible, and David brought this out. David was a psalmist. David was a king. David was also a prophet. And mm -hmm. he said, as a man thinks, so is he. You see, if, if our thinking is distorted and we have a wrong view and you're thinking like that, then you're, you're walking in that reality and it does affect you. It does make a difference. It sets you up for failure. But when mm -hmm. your reality is God's reality about you, how can you lose? He said, I always give you the victory. Mm -hmm. I always cause you to triumph. Well, not everybody would agree with that, Bishop. I mean, I've talked to different preachers, good people, and others, and they'll say, well, I don't know. You know, uh, it probably works for certain people, but it doesn't work for me. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah it always works for everyone that believes it. <laughs> okay, so so if you believe death reigns, then it works for you. If right. you believe life reigns without death, then that works for you. Uh, on Monday, uh, on Tuesday evenings, everybody watching, um, uh, just in case you're looking for some information about this, uh, on my Tuesday night at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, my panel discussion, we're talking about is physical death a part of Father's plan for us? And we're really getting into some deep stuff that, you know, maybe some people don't want to believe it, and that's okay. I remember Kenneth E. Hagen used to say that uh, if you don't believe it, that's okay. It won't work for you. Uh, this works for people. <laughs> who believe it well that really is a powerful truth although uh father is still working in you his good pleasure philippians 1 6 that he has begun a good work in you and he will uh complete that work um uh, francis xavier a minister from uh, uh i i think from pakistan uh, or, or india he says yes christ is for everyone and and that's so important him and i have been talking about the first resurrection as he's conveying this to a uh, muslim friend and and the fact is why why was jesus the first resur first one resurrected even though there were other people who were raised from the dead like lazarus and i think there was a uh, uh, some in the old testament and there and definitely plenty in the new testament but yet jesus well there's a difference between raised from the dead and being resurrected and plus what jesus did no one else could do what 
he did uh, as us. Now, I want to say this, that, uh, and, and Dr. Kay Fairchild's on here, and, and, and she says, um, uh, immortality is the truth, even if everyone <laughs> goes by uh, the, uh, the way of, of uh, it says grace. I, I, I don't know if she meant by the, uh, the grave. Grave, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. But, but it, it, no matter how you go, immortality is the truth. Yeah. Okay, let, let me say that again. No matter how you go, how long you're here in this earth realm, I mean, because I really cannot imagine Father God just uh, uh, caused you to come from invisibility to uh, to to visibility just to live a short time, be full of misery like Job said, and then die. Okay, uh, th no, th no. Listen, misery is not from God. Okay, well, and, and neither well, is death from God. Do you know what is from God? Life. Life and that more abundantly. And so it's very important that we learn to live as Christ. Now, when I say that, again, I'm not talking about the Christ of 33 and a half years. See, for me, I've gotten that out of my thinking. It's the eternal Christ from the beginning. The scriptures say he is the one who is and was and is to come. Now, listen to this. He is in the first century. He was in eternity past, and he is to come. The word come is a Greek word that actually can be rendered, uh, its meaning can be rendered to manifest. So he is ever manifesting in your thinking or in your mind. So uh, I am being awakened to the Christ mind. You know what that's called? That's called relationship. And it continuously happens. Now, back to our story. Uh, we can see who the writer is referring to in this setting. And we, we see that the story, uh, this is a story of, of a vision of faith presenting God and his creation. Uh, so, so what can you do uh, in order to keep from ever giving up in life. This is really what we've been talking about. Well, Apostle Daniel sent me a scripture, and I've got it in three translations. We'll probably read all three translations this morning. But starting with the King James Version, says uh, Luke 21, 19, In your patience possess ye your souls. Now, you quoted that earlier. Think about this. What does it mean in, in patience, in your patience, each individual possess ye your souls. How do you possess your soul? <laughs> yeah, I'm throwing it on you. You're throwing it at me. I, I tell you what, you hit me right between the eyes, about knocked me out. <laughs> 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 well, you, it's, it, it, you're taking ownership by being patient and trusting God. But mm -hmm. I had another thought that goes with that bishop i was thinking about you know god uh, abraham was considered in in old and new you know old testament new testament he was considered a friend of god yes he and was. a matter of fact it, it is the only one in the scripture that it is written exactly that way there's nobody else that he said it in that way and yes, sir. What, he's, what what he's doing there with that, it, he's saying you need to see yourself in relationship as personal friends. Now, a lot of people don't look at having when they're looking at the Lord, they say, oh, or the father. Oh, God, you can't talk to God like that. I mean, he's God almighty. He's the one did all this stuff. How can you approach him, you little, you little piece of grain of sand, you little piece of dirt? How are you going to talk to the God of creation like, like he's your friend? Well, that's what he wants. You see, when we step over from this, matter of fact, Jesus said, I call you friends because a servant doesn't know what his master does. In John chapter 15, but he says, henceforth or hereafter, I call you friends, uh, because through this friendship, uh, a relationship, this talking back and forth like your buddies, believe it or not, then you develop <laughs> this confidence and patience is not a problem anymore. It's easy to be patient, Bishop, with somebody who is your personal best buddy. 
you will cut slack yeah, every, I mean, you'll say, well, that's my best friend. I can wait an hour or two because I yeah. mean, I love my best friend. My best friend is, I mean, man, we walk through thick and thin. That's absolutely priceless to gain that type of thinking in your life. Because another thing, Bishop, here's what happens with close friends. Mm -hmm. They will tell each other secrets to each other. Things that others have to take longer to grab it, to get a hold of because they don't see themselves in that relationship. Amen. It takes longer to get. But when you're a personal friend, you say, hey, Bishop, you know, this happened, that happened. And you say, hey, it's cool, man. We're going to make it. You're talking. You're dialoguing. You're back and forth. And, and you know that when you're doing that, you're both then, because you're your best friends, you've got your best friend helping carry and pick that thing up. Most people don't think a lot of times, Jesus said, my burden is easy. My yoke is light. Learn of me for I'm meek and lowly in heart and you'll find rest to your soul. So you, yeah. you, 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 you become peaceful. You have rest when you come into this place like Abraham was a friend. Can yes. you see yourself that way, folks? That's what I, I want. I want to drive that point just a little bit. Can you see yourself approaching the awesome creator who's your father and, and this type of dialogue as your personal mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. best friend? Think about Amen. it. Go ahead, Amen. Bishop. Amen. And, and that's so good. Uh, so true. <laughs> uh, uh, and and I, I want to just uh, tag on to that and say this. There is a song now. Uh, you know, one of the things we've had to do is we've had to uh, rewrite our songs. Uh, we've had to change words uh, and, and so on. And I say that respectfully to those who have written songs. Uh, but I, I just want to say that one of the things that I find so fascinating uh, is that uh, he is our friend. There's a song that says... I am the a friend of God. Yes. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. Now, yes, he called Abraham his friend. Uh, but uh, 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 Pastor Xavier also, uh, Francis Xavier reminded us that uh, he also calls us friends in the New Testament. Jesus said, you're no longer uh, servants, but you are my friends. Now, later on, it'll even go further uh, in the book of Revelation where he calls us sons. We're sons and daughters of God, manifested. Now, I, I love that because uh, it's really important for us to understand who we are so that we can possess our souls. Now, for example, Dr. K. Fairchild says um, that uh, the truth is that we already possess immortality, uh, but just have to put it on in our awareness. That means to embrace it uh, in our minds, just like I have uh, have uh, uh, deconstructed from the Jesus of 33 and a half years, and I've reconstructed to the, the eternal Christ who always has been. Well, when you change your thinking, it's choosing to embrace a truth that is greater than what you... How, I mean, I, I appreciate where everybody is. I appreciate the things that have been established in you, but it's not time to stay there. If you read back in Hebrews chapter 6, back to the beginning, he'll say, it's not time to stay in this place. It's time to move on to greater truths. Now, back to Luke 21, 19. This is the New King James. It says, by your patience, uh, possess your soul. Uh, the, the problem with manifestations, and we're all about manifestations because we all love uh, blessing. We all love uh, things to manifest for us. But the problem is, is, is uh, in life is clearly a lack of exercising patience. Now, the Passion Translation says, stand firm with patient endurance and you will find your soul's deliverance. Now I like that because this doesn't mean stand still, okay, but but stand firm in patient endurance. Continue to move forward, continue to be active and and preach what you know to be truth. You know, I preach things for years that are I would never even embrace today. 
uh, because that's what I knew. I preached what I knew. But as revelation continued to unfold for me, I began to preach a greater or a, a, a better or clearer truth. So when your soul is in an uproar, I want everybody to hear this that's watching today. When your soul is in an uproar about life, and it happens, <laughs> I, I like this statement, life happens. Okay, right. life yeah. just happens. Well, when your soul, when you're thinking, your thoughts are in an uproar about life, it's time for you to take charge over your thoughts and declare the peace of God to manifest within. It's already there, so it might as well manifest so that through <laughs> patience you possess, or how about this, you take control of your own soul, of your own thinking. And I think, Apostle, sometimes that's where we're at. We, we're not willing to get a hold of our thinking and change the way we think because we we become so comfortable with old thinking, thinking that we're separated from God and thinking that I'm just waiting around to die and I'm getting old and getting feeble and and uh, and I'm, I'm sick for a reason, sick for the glory of God, which is not biblical at all. But I, I think we've done that instead of saying, you know what, I'm willing to go further. I literally am going to take charge of the thinking that's in my soul and I'm going to change the way I think so I can have a better quality of life. Amen. In your patience, possession, your soul. I, I, when I worked that out, this has been a long time ago now, but it, it's literally, in, in essence, taking ownership of it. Yes, sir. Instead of letting other things own your thinking, you know, uh, depression own you, uh, mm -hmm. you know, this uh, fatal thinking theory that if, uh, you know, it could get worse all the time. Instead of uh, letting those things take ownership of mm -hmm. your thinking, you take ownership of how you think. That's uh, it. The Bible says if you'll put your mind on him, you will be at perfect peace. And that is shalom. That means literally uh, prosperity and health. You're, yeah. You will be at perfect peace, prosperity, and health. And that don't just mean things, even though God will bless you with things, but it's being prosperous in every arena of your life. And, and it all comes from uh, how you think, as you think, as you take ownership, as you take control of your life, and don't let anything else do that. So with myself, Bishop, I... I am kind of careful who I allow to basically speak into my life in a sense of, uh, uh, you know, if they're negative, 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 I am not yes. going to walk in, in agreement with that type of an atmosphere at all. I mean, I'm not going to be mean to people. I'm going to love them, but I'm not going to allow myself to be in that thing because uh, that will get in your thinking. What you surround yourself with will eventually become how you begin to live and how you operate because it, right. it, it, it enters into your thinking. And, they, and, you know, in Psalms, he says, uh, well, not Psalms, but Proverbs, he said, guard your heart with all diligence for out of it flow the issues of life. Yes, sir. And, and and if we don't take care of what what we with the intake that we are surrounded in, then the issues that come forth may not be issues of life. It could be issues that will pour out of you of failure and, and all this bad stuff. <laughs> yeah. The Lord don't want you doing that. He loves you too much. Amen. Uh, the, the prodigal son that stayed home. And was upset because the other one was, you know, restored and blessed. They had a big old party. And he and he, he complained about it. His father said to him, he said, son, you are with me always. Luke chapter 15, and I believe right. the second to the last verse. He said, you are with me always. Listen to that, always. That means you're never not with him. You're with me always. And all that I have right. is yours. You see, the concept of uh, 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 has got to develop in how we uh, perceive these things and take possession of our soul 
and through faith and patience, steadfast endurance, all of those things, so that the, the effects of life, which, by the way, life happens, no one is exempt of this. No one's exempt. It happens. We're not, we do not have an exemption. The only way that we can, can get past that truth is a greater truth, and that is what the Lord says about us. He always gives us the victory. Amen. 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 And amen. Amen. <laughs> we, we always have the victory. Life happens, but it's how you handle life. It's how you handle yourself in the knowledge of God. The Bible says that God has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness <laughs> through the knowledge of 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 the eternal christ that's my my rendering of it yeah. uh, apostle daniel this has been a great three uh a, a week series this has been powerful hallelujah i love it i really enjoy being on here with you and, and i really appreciate you being on uh, so much uh, i want to say to everybody watching uh if you're interested you can spread the word around and tell people that uh i have uh four shows a week um, and I'm putting the information in the chat room right now uh, and the link to how people can keep up with these broadcasts um, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And there is the announcement. Also, I want to tell everybody, and, and you know, no matter uh, what you think about this, I'm not uh, plugging for and pushing and begging, but if you want to make a donation to this ministry, uh, there's the different ways you can make a donation to this ministry. Uh, then I also want to say, uh, because we, we, we do work uh, in a sense, we work for free, uh, but uh, the, we have a tuition-free school. Now, I want to tell you, the bulk of income that any university can make is their tuition. And uh, we do not charge tuition, although there are some small fees. Uh, but uh, we just uh, we just appreciate you because we're going to keep doing what we're doing uh, no matter what because we're trusting in the Lord, period. Amen. Uh, and then also, I just want to thank everybody for watching today. Uh, if you would, please click like and click share. And uh, we just appreciate Apostle Daniel for being on. Uh, next week, I'm going to be back on uh, a Tuesday with our panel discussion. Uh, Wednesday, teaching uh, from the book of Joshua, verse by verse, types and shadows. Uh, Thursday, uh, I'll be back on with a, a minister guest. And Friday... Um, uh, Chaplain Shane Gabbert is going to be with me. And uh, so, uh, Apostle Daniel, uh, again, thank you so much. I appreciate you so much, my brother. Appreciate thank what you, you're sir. doing there in Brainerd, Minnesota. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you and the, the fine uh, folks that, uh, that follow your ministry and that are a part of it. And I, too, would encourage you. If what the bishop uh, is uh, providing, the Lord, he's, he's doing it not of charge. Paul said, I, I do this and I do not charge you. But if it is a real blessing, then uh, it would really be cool if, if the Lord puts it on your heart to support the ministry and help him do it. Because as you're doing it, you really become a partaker of the same blessing. Uh, you can't be a blessing to somebody and not get blessed back. And uh, so I encourage you to do that. Um, I love the bishop myself and I appreciate him and what he's doing. So I thank you again, sir, for this opportunity. You're most welcome. Hey, everybody. Uh, it is uh, Friday morning here in uh, the central USA, uh, about 11 a.m. Uh, I want to just tell everybody, have a great rest of your day. Uh, if you're on the other side of the world and it's nighttime there, have a great evening and a great night. And we'll see you next week on one of our broadcasts starting on Tuesday. We love you all. Have a wonderful day. See you soon. Bye-bye, everyone. <laughs>